believe it or not, I am back. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about photography and I make videos just like this one where I share some tips that could help you to take better photos. So if you're here for the first time and you love photography like me, it might be a good idea to subscribe. I don't want to pretend that nothing happened, but I also don't want to spend too much time talking about my last nine months or so. We all agree that photography is a much more interesting subject. All I can say is that I'm well, that I am back, and that I do appreciate your patience. I also tremendously appreciated the, your encouragement throughout this period uh, of darkness. Your emails, your comments, your messages, which I never take for granted, they did play a very important role for my comeback. And one more thing, I did miss taking photos. I did miss making videos, but I also missed you. But now, before we get too emotional, let's talk about what brings us here. Photography. Actually, even better, long exposure photography. In this video, recorded uh, in California in July 2021, and uh, with an intro recorded just now in Liguria, in Italy, we will talk about uh, some advanced settings that should help you, could help you, in your long exposure photography. We will talk about composition and we will talk about using multiple filters at the same time. So let's launch the video. If you like long exposure photography, I believe that you might like this video as well. As a matter of fact, we are going to talk about composition in long exposure photography. Welcome to episode three of my long exposure photography course. We are in California. Precisely, we are in Point Arena in a typical summer gloomy day of the California coast. I'm really excited to be back in California. I miss the coast. I miss the people. And I'm looking forward to tell you more about all this. As I said, today we are going to talk about composition in long exposure photography. And we will also see a more advanced use of neutral density filters. We will see how to stack uh, multiple filters at the same time. We will see how to add a gradient filter and why. This is a typical situation that will require the use of a gradient neutral density filter. The sky is super bright compared to the rest of the scene. I do like uh, the minimalism and the negative space that uh, the sky will add in this photo, but usually I prefer to have uh, a darker sky in order to add a more dramatic mood and create uh, a unique atmosphere. In this video, we are going to use the Nisi Long Exposure Professional Kit. Let me attach the pouch to my tripod and set up my filter adapter. So I do want to smoothen the water and as you can tell, the ocean, uh, the Pacific Ocean is very rough. So I will need uh, quite a long exposure, possibly around three minutes. And at f11, my base shutter speed 
is 1 over 200. And so I will need a 15 stops neutral density filter that will give me roughly 3 minutes. What I usually like to do is to set up my filters uh, in the filter holder before attaching the system to the adapter. I think there are less chances to lose your filters uh, and if I let them fall here, I will not be able to retrieve them for sure. When using a, a gradient filter, I like to put the solid filter first uh, in order to prevent any possible light leak. The 15 stops has a, a nice uh, light uh, leak protection in the back. And so in this way, I feel uh, confident that uh, no light will go through the filter system. Let me pick my three stops, gradient and D. There you have it. In my composition, the horizon is right in the middle. And so when I'm placing my filter, basically I will try to keep the soft edge right in the middle as well. I see some dust on my filter, so I will use this convenient tool that comes with uh, the professional kit that will help me to keep my filters nice and clean. For this composition, I'm using the rule of thirds and uh, on the left side, I'm uh, using these rocks as a leading line and on the right side, I'm using the coastline that leads to the lighthouse. Being a three minutes exposure, I will need uh, to use my remote shutter release. I'm in manual mode, bulb, I already closed my viewfinder because the light could leak through the viewfinder as well if you're using a DSLR. I set my three minutes on the remote shutter release and I can start my exposure right now. So while uh, the exposure is going, uh, let me tell you more about composition uh, in long exposure photography. This image that I'm taking uh, uh, maybe is not the ideal expression of what I like for uh, long exposure photography compositions. And I tell you why. The main reason is that I like to have uh, a very strong and solid uh, non-moving uh, foreground in order to emphasize the long exposure and eventually in a seascape photo um, the smoothness of uh, the water that I have created through the long exposure. In this case my foreground is uh, not so close and I actually really want to show you the difference between uh, a composition like this and how a closer foreground could actually help to enhance your long exposures. So let's go check another location in order to find the proper composition, a composition with a strong foreground. So I found uh, another composition, a very different composition that will possibly uh, explain better what I meant before. Uh, basically, in order to enhance the movement of the water or the stillness of the water that we have created through a long exposure, I need, I want to have a very strong 
solid foreground. And I prefer to have my camera, my point of view, as close as possible to the foreground. In my opinion, this further enhances the long exposure. Let's see how this is going to work now. Because I don't have special colors at this moment, I want to create a very minimalistic shot, a very minimalistic mood with the water super still that will almost give you the feeling that these rocks are basically floating on top of the water. My base shutter speed is 1 over 100. I will use again the 15 stops neutral density filter that will give me an exposure of roughly six minutes and on top I will stack uh, a three stops gradient ND but this time my horizon is uh, at the very top of my composition so I will need to move shift up my gradient filter by quite a bit in order to have the soft edge that will take maybe less than one-fourth of the composition just like in my shot I will move to manual mode. Of course, I am in bulb. Set up my six minutes. And start my exposure. Let's see what happened here. Wow, this is nice. Hope that after seeing this image you will understand why a solid strong foreground can enhance uh, your long exposure photography especially in a seascape environment like this and talking about compositions uh, i also want to mention the fact that if you are uh, taking your long exposures uh, uh, with uh, trees or grass or leaves just be careful because you might also capture movements that uh, uh, you didn't mean to have in your images. Ideally, in those situations, you don't want to take photos or you don't want to take long exposure photos uh, if you have a lot of wind. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you will embrace uh, the journey of long exposure photography and that these few tips will help you to enjoy it even more. As far as it concerns this channel, I believe I learned a few lessons along the way and I will try to put them to good use in this new chapter. So most likely you will not see a new video every Thursday, but I promise you that you will have a new video every time I will have good content and the right attitude. This is all for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.